I've got this garden and sometimes I'll go out and I'm watering the garden and I realize that all these weeds have come up. And I've done gardening before where weeds are sprouting up everywhere and they're choking the life from my plant. And I've gone out of town and come back and my plants are really doing oh, pitiful. Like they're growing horribly. And so my neighbors have these enormous squash and cucumbers and I have like these little guys. And the reason why is because no one was tending the ground no one was pulling the weeds. And what would happen if there are no weeds? So I had this garden and I didn't lay down weed barrier. And so weeds popping up, I'm always having to pull these weeds. In the same way, we have this field of consciousness that is two-sided. Conscious and a subconscious side of this field of consciousness. And when we were continually sowing into this field, and what we sow into this field we ultimately reap from this field. So when we sow seeds like good seeds and evil seeds, seeds, seeds from a, a perceptional duality, I see good and evil, and as a result of what I see, I'm sowing good and evil into this field, then we reap good and evil. And oftentimes those weeds, the evil seeds, this idea of evil or uh, negative, actually are choking out the positive, the good things that we wanna create. So we wanna create wealth, it's these negative uh, seed of doubting the wealth or of um, poverty mindset or of not liking money a lot. These seeds are choking out the desire to create wealth. When I'm focused on pain or sickness, my sickness in my body or pain in my body, but I really want to manifest health. So now I'm sowing seeds of sickness and pain, and I'm also sowing seeds of, I really want to manifest health, and these seeds of sickness and pain are choking out the seeds of health. This is the dual world. So there are moments where you have really good health and you're feeling good, and there are moments of sickness and disease. There are moments where you are succeeding and you have money, and it just seems like it's coming in. And then there are moments where you're not. This is all has to do with the field of consciousness. And this is what I'm gonna to talk to you about today and I genuinely know that this has impacted my life tremendously and has transformed my life from a life where I was up and down emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually to a life of just soaring in perpetual ecstasy. And I want to talk to you about that right now. In Matthew chapter 13, there's this passage of scripture. It talks about how basically um, this man went out and he sowed seed into the field. And at night, the enemy came and sowed seed into the field. Tares. And Jesus explains this parable. And he was talking about how the bad seed is that the enemy, the the good seed is the sons of God and the bad seed is the sons of the devil. Now, what we need to realize is the sons is offspring of God. An offspring of God or your divine self is the thoughts that you have, the thoughts that are going on in your mind. And the reason why the devil, the enemy, and the sons of the devil come at night are the thoughts of the devil, the thoughts of, sorry, the thoughts of your, um, uh, of your analytical mind come at night is because that's when that though subconscious is really active and your mind moves from analytical into a place of from beta into a place of alpha and then theta and then delta and if I'm sewing at night like if I'm watching TV or I'm thinking before I go to bed and I'm just focusing on, oh, my day's been rough and things are going bad, then what's actually happening is this is where the analytical mind is actually sowing seeds of doubt and of fear and of poverty and of sickness and of disease and of COVID-19 into my field of consciousness. Instead of sowing the good seed, the health and prosperity, we're allowing those seeds to be sown into our field of consciousness. What's in the field of consciousness This then gets, then gets reaped. So later on in that same passage of scripture, Jesus is talking to his disciples and he's like, listen, he gives another parable. He's like, listen, the kingdom of God is like uh, a field. 
kingdom of God is like a, like a treasure hidden in a field. Treasure, this inner place hidden in your field of consciousness. And when a man finds this field, he literally he goes and sells everything he has to buy the field. In other words, when you realize the field of consciousness and the secret place, this field of consciousness actually begins in your heart. Uh, it's actually been proven that your heart or the energy from your heart, this, this is one of your brains actually. Uh, there's more neuro signals going from your heart to your brain than from your brain to your heart. Um, you can be brain dead, physically brain dead, and still your body's still alive because your heart's beating. But if your heart goes, everything goes. And so, and the heart aura, the heart energy field is actually much bigger than the brain energy field, just to give you an example. So, uh, this field of consciousness, and I'm not just talking about the physical heart here, I'm talking about the spirit, I'm talking about your inner, your true nature. The physical heart, as a man thinking that his heart, so is he. Physical heart is your field of consciousness that we are continually sowing in. Most people aren't living or abiding in the field of consciousness. He who abides in the secret place, this field of consciousness, shall dwell under the wings of the Almighty. In other words, you dwell in perpetual, continual bliss, safety, peace, so on and so forth. This is because I have realized the field of consciousness and I am stewarding the field of consciousness at all times. I'm living in this place of Eden. I'm not just occasionally dropping in on Eden, visiting it for a vacation, and then walking away. And I'm not bringing into Eden weeds. I'm not bringing into this perfect ground weeds and turmoil and sickness and doubt. Instead, I'm living and abiding in this place, this secret place, this field of consciousness. And so when I discover this kingdom, the kingdom of God is within. Jesus said this. He said, don't look for the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God doesn't come with observation. Don't look over here, look over here. Jesus is coming back. God's coming back. The kingdom's coming. The kingdom is not coming that way. He said, he said, the kingdom of God is within you. It's actually within. This is a field of consciousness. When we become aware of the field of consciousness and we start living from the perfection of this field of consciousness, we begin to outwardly manifest in our bodies this field of consciousness. In other words... <laughs>